What's going on, Sumolings? Thank you for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay, and we are joined today by the team over at ViewStub. ViewStub is a simple software solution that helps you organize in-person, live streaming, or on-demand events with a built-in video player and seamless checkout. It is available right now starting at $99 for a lifetime deal. Um, before we jump into the walkthrough and show you everything about ViewStub, I do want to tell you just a few quick things. Uh, the first, if you want to tell us a little bit about your business, your use case, why you're interested in ViewStub, what kind of events you're looking to do, uh, you can go ahead and do that over in the chat box on the right hand side. Um, if you have any questions about the deal or the tool, how to get set up, anything like that, you can leave those questions in the Q&A box down below the video and we will, um, we do have somebody on standby answering those questions and chatting with you, um, but we'll also circle back to those questions at the end of the walkthrough. Uh, and the third thing is that there will be a replay of this available, um, so you can watch this as many times as you want, but also if you need to step out, it's no big deal, uh, you can go ahead and do that. All right. Hey, Spencer, how are you doing today? Hey, thank you so much. Doing well. I'm glad to have you. I'm excited to pass this off to you. Uh, Sumalings, again, you have any questions, leave those in the Q&A box. And uh, Spencer, if you want to take it from here. Awesome. And thank you, Mitch, for joining and helping with the comments and questions. We really appreciate that. Um, all right. So can you see my screen? Sure can. Looks great. Awesome. All right, so this is the main homepage for viewstub.com. And I went ahead and created an account um, as if I was a Sumo Ling, like yourselves. Um, so if you are here and you've already registered, uh, you would just go to create events here as well. And um, that will bring you to this page where you can go ahead and enter the name of your event. Um, you can also make this event private. Uh, if you're looking to either um, share it with members who are not part of the general public or they may uh, be a smaller group that you don't want it to be included on our events page. And this is just an example of uh, our explore page where you'll see all types of different events and uh, they're trying to, you know, garner more attention and, and gain a public audience. Um, and you can have that option as well just by keeping this box unchecked. Uh, you'll then um, have your own event URL. So it would be viewstub.com slash AppSumo event. And again, this is if you're not using our white label solution and you wanted to share this link out with um, your social media channel or with your blog or with any other um, channel that you might be using. And then you'll want to go ahead and add your tickets. Um, and those can be either in-person tickets or virtual tickets. And you'll go ahead and set your price here. So let's say $10. And you can make this a donation-based ticket as well, meaning that the customer will be able to select their own price. Okay, and you can do as many tickets as you want. And then you can also choose to pass the fees on to the customer, as well as um, you can also choose whether or not to pass on the payment processing fees, um, which are part of the credit card uh, processing fees. And then this would be, for instance, a uh, live stream ticket, and that will allow the customer to be able to purchase access to a virtual ticket. Um, and if you click here, it will show you the breakdown of how much you will earn. So this would be your payout total um, to yourself and then how much the customer will pay if I chose to pass uh, the fees on or if I change these here, it will update the, the schedule of fees. And then as I go down, uh, I can choose how long the customer will have access uh, to the individual videos that are a part of this ticket. And so let's just say that I want that to be, you know, 10 days. Um, I can go ahead and change that here. And then this is when the ticket sales will start. So if I chose today, you know, at 1 p.m. and then I want them to end, let's just say next, uh, next year so that I can maximize the value here, I can go ahead and do that. And this is a great way to do you know, your staggered uh, early bird pricing as well as promotions. And I'll show you a little bit more about that on the next screen. Uh, so you would simply write in here, you will have access for 10 days. Um, and you can also um, watch 
live, right? So you just give a little description of what they're gonna get with this ticket. If it was an in-person ticket, you might say VIP access includes a free t-shirt, right? And I'll show you how you can add different things uh, in terms of custom questions. And if you don't wanna sell more than, you know, let's just say your venue only holds 100 people, you can put a limit here, and then you can also choose whether or not to display that limit uh, to your customers on the front end of the page. And so you'll just go ahead and add this ticket. All right, and so now you've got your ticket here. And if you want to edit it or delete it, absolutely, you can do that. You can add more tickets. Um, and then if you want to add a custom question, this is where you would do that. So you would choose your ticket type and you can make it required and say, what is your t-shirt size? Um, and this is in a way for you to ask, you know, are you a member? Um, what's your student ID? Those types of things. And you can add that question here and it'll show up there, okay? And then you can also add promo codes uh, or discounts. So for this ticket, I wanna do a discount code, let's call it AppSumo. So if anyone types in AppSumo, the new amount will be five bucks, right? So I'll add that promo code and here it is here. Okay, um, let's not do any refunds, but you're absolutely able to, and then uh, we would allow them to contact you. Uh, you'll put in your email, and they will get forwarded to you, but we won't share out your individual email. Um, and then this would be allowed uh, as well as part of that feature. And then this is the event date. So let's say the event is gonna be on July 4th. We're gonna have a big barbecue. So actually, let me uh, change this to barbecue event. All right. And then uh, this is how long I want it to be available for sale. So my sales would end um, on the page. Let's just say uh, to match up with our ticket uh, that we want to go all the way through to um, the June 24th date at 1 p.m. Okay. And then we would add the thumbnails um, here and that can be, you know, a logo. Um, so let's just find like the Vista logo. Let's use this. <laughs> uh, and then this allows you, this is our old one with the trademark, but I'll go ahead and uh, either fit the width, fit the height, um, and then you can also drag these to the right size that you think is appropriate. But I'll go ahead and fit the height there. And then you can add tags. So you can say barbecue, um, you know, event, those types of things. And this is how people can find your event on your preview page as well as in our event marketplace. And then your description is basically what they're gonna get. So hot dogs, hamburgers, and virtual games, right? So whether or not they buy an in-person ticket or a virtual ticket, they wanna describe what they'll be getting here. Uh, of course, uh, we can do any type of integration uh, with like a Zoom platform or other streaming platforms. Uh, so you're able to offer that as well as telling them, look, you'll have access to uh, the meeting details via email and add those types of descriptions there. Um, this is a really cool feature where you can add public affiliate links to the front of your page, uh, meaning that anyone can come on and find the event and they can share in the revenue. Or you could even do uh, a zero dollar promotion and do something like, you know, if you sell two tickets, if you help sell two tickets, you get yours for free, right? Yours is free. And this is how you can start to track those promotions. So that customer would be able to grab their own link and start to share it on their own channel. And this can be done also with um, your vendors, with your sponsors, uh, with any of your attendees, like I mentioned. Um, and I'll just show you quickly what the affiliate dashboard looks like. Oh, it looks like uh, they don't have our event there yet. So let me wait until we get back. Um, whoops. So this is where you can set, you know, I want them to receive $1 for every ticket that they sell, or I want them to receive 10%. You can also add your Facebook pixel. If you're familiar with what that is, it will help your marketing to mature over time as it will start to track the people that are coming onto this preview page and, and helping you to uh, more target your ideal customers. And then you can set your email reminders for how um, soon you'd like them to be reminded. And of course, this is gonna be an online only event, but of course I can do in person as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, publish this page, but if I wanted to, I could save it for later. And what that will do, it will show me, you know, if there are any errors. So it says, 
I have to change it because it's already being used, I guess. Cool. All right, so now that my event is published, you'll see that this media and attendees tab is now available. And so I can go to my media tab and this is similar to what the attendee will see on their side. It has the live chat available. So I can say, you know, hi everyone. And it will show up as if I was the organizer. And then this is where I'll go ahead and add um, a live stream media. So this is my ticket here, or my live stream, sorry. And I'll say this is a regular or 360 video. And then when, just moving the Zoom screen here, when I want that to happen. So let's just say that the event date was the July 4th, right? So July 4th, um, and we'll go live at 1 p.m., right? So I'll add that media here, and you'll see that it's now set up for me, and it will populate my stream key and stream URL, which I'll put into my live stream encoder or into Zoom or any software that I'm using for the actual streaming. If you need any help with that, you can absolutely click here to find out more information. But as soon as everything is ready and you're streaming on the other side, you'll go ahead and hit start stream here and it will populate for you um, to see the preview image here. And then uh, I can absolutely go ahead and embed this checkout onto my own website. And so you can change the colors here and say, you know, my website is more blue. And so you just go ahead and copy and paste this. You can hit copy and then paste that into your website uh, so that you'll have your own um, event without any of the Vista branding associated. And so let me show you what that would look like. This is just an example that we host on our own website, but you can imagine that this was uh, yourbrand.com. And uh, anyone can actually go check this out. It's viewstub.com slash white label. And just take this code right here um, and put it into the um, artist. So I'll, I'll pick a, one live stream. So this is what it would come through as uh, with your preview image. Uh, some event details, kind of your event description, when it would expire, some of the things that you saw us. Um, of course, there's the processing fees. Um, that would be the sum of whatever combination you choose. And then so here's where you can enter your promo codes as well. But you can see this has no view stub branding. Uh, we did leave the red color, but this would all turn blue. And it shows you, you know, in-person ticket here or live stream ticket or uh, on-demand replay ticket as well. And if I want to check out, um, but I'm going to click already purchased because I have my code here. Put that in. Go ahead and click enter. And you'll see that right here on the website, it now populates the video player as well as the chat. And then as well, you'll see if I scroll down uh, the individual playlist items. So this is where multiple streams can be shown. So the, the customer can actually choose uh, between which session they want to watch, which camera angle they want to watch, if there's uploaded content, if there's a specific PowerPoint video that was uploaded, a sponsored commercial or breakout session, as many videos as you'd like, you can add back here um, on your event page. So let me go back to that page. So you can click live or upload. And uh, if I wanted to just upload videos, it's really simple. I just put in the title and then choose the file here as well. Um, so that's pretty much everything that you'll need to know for your media. If there was an in-person event, this is where your attendees would show up as well as you'd have the ability to check them in using QR code scanning. Um, and they will start to populate here as your sales come in. So you would see the individuals uh, rows populating here, but because we haven't started sharing this event, there is nothing here at the moment. And that is where um, you will have the code populate so that your volunteers at your event uh, will not have to access your individual account and they can have a specific code and they'll go to viewstub.com slash scan on their phone or any device, enter that code and be able to check people in from any mobile browser. So if they're in Chrome or Safari, they'll be able to just check people in on their phone and then it will update the account accordingly, but they're not actually logging into your ViewStub account. And then right here, you have simple things like preview, preview the event, which I'll go to now. You can copy the event link you can copy the checkout link, which is the one that I'll show you. You can check your QR code. This is for um, putting into like a flyer or any other type of uh, promotion, as well as um, you can unpublish your event here. So let me go to the checkout link and uh, show you what that looks like. 
So this is our event, right? And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop right into the actual um, checkout box here, right? And so it has this preview page as well. Uh, this is where you'll see that um, affiliate link that we mentioned. So if I want to get an affiliate link, I would go right to my page and now here's my link and I can share that out. Um, and then I can see where my individual clicks and purchases are coming from by clicking on view more data. Um, and then as the organizer, I can create individual, and this is what I was going to show you earlier, create individual ones for anybody and say, okay, I want this, uh, this sponsor to be able to receive, let's just say actually 30% uh, of any ticket sales that come in through um, to their events. So here we go and I'll create that link for them and then it'll be available uh, for me to give to them um, for them to start sharing out. And this is a great way for an organizer to put a link onto like LinkedIn or Facebook or any other channel and start to track where their sources are coming from. Um, so if you really want to see how many clicks you're getting from an individual channel, uh, this is a free way as part of our software to be able to start tracking your marketing. That's a really awesome tool. Um, and so I'll go right here and go to my account hub where I just wanted to show you quickly like how you can go right to the event um, and you can go live and I have another event in here that I was messing with earlier. Uh, you can go to edit event, check in your attendees, event analytics. Um, so let me go to event analytics. And this is where you can do emailing your attendees. You can see your purchases um, and you know, really everything you need is, is right here. Um, and that is basically everything that you'll need for your event. So you would, you know, be able to see your individual views coming from different sources, um, as well as your purchases, and then you can export your sales as well, uh, as they populate here. So I think we have some questions, um, if we'd like to go into that session, uh, section of the, uh, definitely. Um, Sumo Langs, if you have any more questions, you can go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box. Um, the questions, some of these have already been answered, but I want to make sure that they're available in the replay. Um, can a, an event span more than a day? Like, if can it span over a week? Is there any time limit to the length of an event? No, there is no, um, you know, time limit. You can do a week-long event. You can do a month-long event. Uh, you can do a series of events. You can put the individual series of events within an event, if that makes sense. So you can actually um, continuously add new media into an existing event. So if you wanted to just uh, sell one ticket and say, we're going to continuously add uh, content into here, uh, you can do that. You can also set it up as a subscription so that their access would expire after a certain amount of time, and then they would need to repurchase access. Uh, so if you wanted to do a monthly or, or weekly subscription, you can do that. Awesome. Um, how do you set up breakout rooms? Yeah, so breakout rooms are really cool. Um, let me just go to um, how you would do that. So I'm just getting these Zoom screens out of the way. Sorry about that. Um, so here on the media page, right, the best way to do that would be to set up individual Zoom sessions. For instance, let's just say you wanted to use Zoom as a conferencing software. Um, you would set up a live stream here that would be called like breakout one right and then you would choose the same you know date and time that we were using before let's just say you want to do it after the event right so you wanted it to be at like 3 p.m sorry these zoom screens are in my way i'm just moving them around um and then this would be your breakout one you would do another one for like breakout two Let's just say that one was in 360 video for some reason. Um, you can do that. Oh, sorry, July 4th. And this one's gonna be at 3.30. Cool, so you've got your two breakouts um, and those have their own individual stream keys and stream URLs. And so you would put these stream keys into those individual Zoom sessions. And then whoever has access to those Zoom sessions uh, would have access to watch them here as an attendee as well. Um, so 
it depends on how you want to set it up. If you want them to be a part of the actual breakout session, uh, then you would let them have access to the Zoom. Um, and then, of course, anyone that purchased to watch the replays would be able to watch it from the white label or from this page here. Um, so you have a couple options there. You can actually give these stream keys um, to the individual participants uh, and then let them, like, so you would create a whole entire event called Breakout. So it, you know, it doesn't have any media now, but this whole entire event would be called Breakout One. And then they would all come in under their own stream key. So we, we have the flexibility to be able to do as much or as little as you'd like uh, within terms of your strategy. Amazing, thank you. Um, the next question that we have, can we see the user experience? How does the user enter an event? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if, this, if this was the um, white label version, this is exactly how it would look. So this would be embedded onto your website. And I would love to show you other events, um, but just for privacy reasons, you know, I, I won't be able to do that. But this is just an example of an event, you know, that we that we made, um, and it it would look just like this. So um, I turn the volume off. But this is a conference uh, that we had permission to share, and you can see, you know, he's on stage there, and they actually did this with an iPad. Um, funny enough, and it, it turned out really well. Uh, they were able to sell a ton of tickets, um, and you know, it's. Uh, it's got, you know, actually the real event has multiple sessions in here for multiple days. So you can see why it says day one, they had a multiple day event. And, um, you know, this is exactly how it would look. Uh, and you can change the size and, and uh, this is an iframe code. So you can change all the different aspects of this iframe. So if that answers your question. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, and I do want to let some siblings know that if you're leaving questions in the chat box, I I'm, I'm not looking at the chat box. I'm looking at the Q&A box down below the video. So go ahead and leave those questions in the Q&A box. Um, all right, uh, how do they enter the event? I saw an access code. Do they have to log in or do they get a link and then get an access code? How does that work? Yes, yeah, so this access code would be emailed to you. Um, and so that email will show up in your inbox and will say, thank you for purchasing access to, you know, this, this event was actually called Skillathon and it will say that in the subject line. And then it will say, here's your access code. And then you would put that access code into, let me just go back to this page just to kind of show. So it says already purchased here. And so they'll put that access code right here. And then this screen will automatically uh, turn into the video player. There you go. Whoa, fun, I love it. Um, yeah. All right, how do I know that my event purchaser is not being used by another person? that your event um, purchase code? I'm guessing, yeah. Okay, so um, you know the codes are individually shared uh, via email to the, to the individual purchaser. Uh, one thing that we are adding uh, to combat that is that they will have to enter their email as well. Uh, but uh, we actually have sessions being stored, so you can actually only be logged into one session at a time. Uh, so if you're familiar with uh, cookies and browser sessions, that's really how we uh, combat that. So right now you can't be on two separate IP addresses logged in. It's not like Netflix, you know, where you can share your, share your code or, or log in. It would kick one person out. Love so, that. Yeah. Uh, will you have an API to import a list of attendees, like their name and email for the event? That is on our product roadmap right now. We are able to do that manually. So uh, our account executives will absolutely help you with that to go ahead and upload that list into your event. If you've already sold tickets, for instance, and you want to include them here, uh, we would give you a list of codes and we can email those out through our system. Actually, let me show you that real quick. Let me see what page I'm on here. Um, okay, so if I go up to, let me move the screen here. If I go up to uh, account hub, I can actually email the attendees here. So I can select the event. I can select individual ticket type from that event. So let me do that real quick. And I can say, you know, um, hey attendees, and this will send to all attendees. Um, but when we do the manual, it actually will come from, come from the event organizer with their individual access codes. 
So as we kind of upload those, that's why it's done manually right now, but um, we're actually pushing a change soon that will let you email individual attendees as well. So that's, that's almost done and it's about to be launched, but uh, this is where you would do that. Awesome. Um, is the affiliate dashboard white labeled? The affiliate dashboard is not currently white labeled. Um, we do hear the feedback around that. And so, um, you know, because it is sharing to your own website, uh, we, you know, we don't have the ability to kind of do that. Uh, we, we found a way to make it work. And so we're working on that. Um, and so right now it is not currently available for the white label. Um, but we know a way that we're able to accomplish that. Uh, so not yet. Cool. That's fine. Um, what about the payment page? Can you white label the payment page? Um, so in terms of if you have a client kind of scenario where you, you're um, maybe you're a manager and you have a client and you wanted to white label the payment page, is that what you're asking? Like, uh, you're, are you saying this payment this page? Question, or? I mean, that's all, that's all that they've said is can you white label the payment page? Um, Dale, if you want to like clarify, perhaps? That this page here would be white labeled, um, if that's what they're referring to. So oh, cool. there's no view, stub, no view stub branding here. Um, you can change these colors. Uh, and then, of course, all of this pulls from view stub, but you can see there's no view stub logos or branding or anything like that. And this website would be, of course, any website.com. Cool. Yeah. Um, can we also upload videos to your platform? Yes. Yeah. So you can absolutely upload videos. Um, so let's just go while we're on that subject, by the way, there's a second question. Um, what's the max video and audio resolution that view stub can handle if you can do both. Um, so we support, you know, all the way up to, let me just pause this real quick so I can log in. Um, we support all the way up to 4k, you know, um, if you, you want to do 1080, that's, that's great. Um, and then, you know, 60 frames per second. Uh, the bit rate, we like to keep under 4,000 uh, just for live streaming. Um, but, you know, if you want to upload a, a four gigabyte video, you can absolutely do that as well. Does, does that answer the question? I think so. Um, Dale had a follow-up question. Will the client see a white labeled page? Will the, cli the client will see whichever, so you can use our page or you can use the white label page. Um, so if you use our page, um, then it would, you know, simply be a Vista branded page. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you want to use this, this page, it would say event name here. And cool. then it would have, it would, it would have no Vista branding. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there are some questions that Mitch is um, being great about and answering right away, but they keep disappearing for me. Um, there has been a question about um, the hours of streaming. Can you explain how the the blank hour streaming hours per free access stream event work? Got it. Yeah, and, and real quick, this is where you would upload as many videos um, as oh, you yeah. want to. Like, so, um, appreciate that question. Um, and uh, for the streaming hours on the deal codes, so it it kind of goes up with the deal code purchases. So you'll have more available stream hours. So it's not cumulative hours over days. Um, it's actual streaming hours, right? So if you stream for one hour and then you stop and then you wait, you know, two days and you stream again uh, for one hour, that would be two hours of streaming time. If, and that would be only tied to free events, right? Otherwise, um, if you're, you know, doing a, a pay-per-view, uh, model, then we would, you know, not have as many limits uh, to your streaming hours there. What about donation based events? Do those qualify as free? Uh, so donation based are not free, right? Um, those right. events, uh, you know, we have a minimum price of $5 uh, if there is any payment. So, um, you know, just from our customers, we never saw one, two, three, four uh, ticket prices. So we, we just kind of did away with that. It's not really worth it after credit card processing fees and such. Sure. So, uh, yeah, the minimum donation will be five dollars right now, and um, yeah, that would that would also satisfy as a paid event. Awesome. Uh, will the emails? Uh, Sorry, uh, you can do donations on in-person events or virtual events. So, 
Um, you know, we're a hybrid platform that offers both ticket types. Uh, so you can do that on either ticket type. Amazing. Uh, will the email attendees uh, receive, uh, when they receive the ViewStub confirmation email, uh, will it have ViewStub branding or will we have the ability to brand with our logo? Yeah, so that is something that we are also really close to finalizing. So it, technically, if you open up the, you know, the little header on your email, it, it has the reply to as the event name, uh, but it would reply back to support at viewstub.com because we want to mask uh, the, the organizer emails. Uh, but we do have a, a solution for how to fully remove the support at viewstub.com from the reply um, option. And so that's something that, you know, we, we heard the feedback from the Sumo links and, and we are already almost done with that feature. So um, at the moment, it that, that does have that small, like if you were to expand uh, where the email came from, it, you know, it looks like it says from the event name, but then um, it says support at viewstub.com, but we're, we found a way to remove that. So we're, uh, we're gonna be launching that soon. Awesome. Uh, and just so everybody knows, we only have one more question left here in the Q&A box. So if you want to go ahead and leave those questions for us, we'd love to answer them for you right now. Uh, this one is, can you speak about how much we can customize the registration page? Yes. Yeah, so the registration page can be customized from the you know description all the way down to the ticket descriptions, as well as the images. You can add, you know, multiple images in the carousel. Um, let me see, do I still have one of those pages open? Let me go to preview event page. So, you know, all of, uh, you know, this from this profile image here, of course, uh, the tags, you know, are here, the event details. Um, we're very close to pushing a, a feature where you're able to upload images for your sponsors right here onto the front page. Um, in, the, in the past, we've always included them in the carousel of these main images, um, but, yeah, we're going to have it right below so that you can have more images as part of your sponsors. Um, and so that's something that you can expect soon as well as video previews. Uh, so if you want to have a video populate up here, uh, that's something that is also going to be launched very soon. So um, that's as much as you can customize with the white label. Uh, of course, um, this all pulls from that page. So this is the same. This would be like the logo that you just saw. Um, you can change all of these colors. Uh, to whatever color you want. Um, but then this is just stuff that's pulled from your ticket description, your ticket name. Uh, this is the type of ticket. Um, and then this, of course, is your date and your location. And, um, you know, those types of things are all dynamic based on how you update them in our, in our site. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we do have a follow-up question about the free streaming counter. Uh, does it ever reset, say, monthly, or once you run out of free streaming hours, that's it? Um, it is per event. So you could you know, simply just create a new event, um, and that would, that would help uh, you to reset that, that clock. Amazing. Those are all the questions that we have in here. Um, I did see one other question that I feel like maybe you've answered, but it feels like a question that people might have. So I want to find that one again. Um, da, da, da. Oh, one question was, when does the user have to have to set up a ViewStub account when they register for an event? Do they have to log in to ViewStub before they access an event with the user code? Yes, only if you do not use the white label, right? So if you have an event um, on the Explore page, right? So uh, if they were to find your event here, um, and they said, okay, I want to go to the AppSumo barbecue event. And, oh, I'm logged in. Let me log out real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and they said, I want to go to this event. Um, then that's when they would create an account with ViewStub. And that is a way for us, you know, similar to the other event platforms that you might have used in the past. That's a way for us to email them, a way for them to get, you know, their ticket access. And their, we email them a QR code if it's an in-person event and those types of things. Um, so that's when they would need to create an account. So awesome. Do you have any suggestions for audio interfaces that work well with this type of streaming platform, say for a live concert type event? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you want to use, you know, multiple lavalier mics. If it's a conference, if it is uh, a concert, then you would certainly want to, you know, have as many in ingest um, 
sources as, as you need uh, for your event. Uh, but you're absolutely going to want to have, you know, professionals helping you uh, if it's a large concert to make sure that you have the best quality audio uh, coming into your feed. Um, but I will kind of uh, leave that, you know, to a more technical um, conversation. And we'd be happy to, to have that conversation offline with, you know, our, our event staff. But, you know, we, we work directly with the teams, like the AV teams and the videographer teams to, to help with that kind of stuff. We have some uh, also information posted in our facts page. Um, so if anyone wants to check that out, you can go to facts and pricing down here, as well as we have tutorial videos and more information under the discover portion of our footer here. So, um, and then of course we, we do have a videographer network. So if anyone is looking, um, for help with their event and needing to find qualified professionals, uh, we can absolutely send you a, great team, you know, people that we have vetted ourselves and that can help you with, with those types of things. Um, so. Awesome. Yeah. Let us know. Sure. Um, what platform do you use to transmit the event? For example, zoom or something else? Yeah. Zoom is, uh, is one of the most popular ones today, obviously with everything going on in the world. Um, so we have a direct integration with them, but, but realistically the best way to think about it is anything that you're showing on your screen, we would also show on our screen. So if you want to share a PowerPoint, um, if you want to share, you know, Microsoft teams, or if you wanted to, you know, use StreamYard or Streamlabs, we use all of those platforms. Um, OBS is probably the most popular one it stands for online broadcasting software. Um, and it's a free software to use. And that's predominantly the one that most people use um, in the industry. Uh, Restream.io is one of my favorites. Uh, it allows you to, to push to multiple places. So you can push to Facebook, you can push to ViewStub, you can push to YouTube all at the same time. Um, and so we like all of those platforms. I, I don't think that we have a, a preferred favorite, um, but I do see most people using OBS. Um, and because it's just uh, one of the, largest, um, you know, across the industry are uh, most widely adopted. Awesome. And those are all of the questions that we have here. I'm going to stall for just a little bit uh, in case some more, um, you know, questions come in. It looks like people might be asking about specific. Oh, is there a storage space limit? Um, so there is not technically a storage space limit, but um, the videos would work best if you compress them uh, prior to uploading them. It will take a, a long time, you know, if you have a very large video uh, for you to upload it to our system. Um, so we recommend, you know, using like a FFmpeg to compress your videos. Um, but, you know, typically we think that you should keep your videos to less than two gigabytes. Um, and, you know, that, that, would, that would be, you know, pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, if, if that makes sense. And then I also see a question here about, um, you know, multiple currencies, uh, and I can absolutely answer that for you. So uh, that was one that we are shooting for the end of the month. Um, and we have uh, two developers working on, on getting that done. It, you know, it seems like it won't be too difficult from what we've scoped it out. We're about halfway through. And so we just need to do some testing on that. Um, so don't hold me to end of the month, but that is our goal. Um, so. Uh, I saw that you were asking about the Yeah, currency. a bunch of questions has come in. Thank you. Uh, do you plan an integration with Dropbox for uploading the video files? Uh, that's a great idea. I haven't, um, you know, been asked that one in the past. Uh, I don't see why not. Uh, so we can absolutely add that to our list of, uh, of features. You know, um, doesn't seem like a bad idea. Right now, you can absolutely just put the link um, to a public Dropbox in uh, in the chat or uh, in, in any of the emails that you send out through our system. And that's what we see a lot of customers doing right now. Uh, so they're, you know, currently just, just doing that. And, uh, they put Google drive links, any type of links you can put into our software. We're very flexible, very agnostic. We don't limit you from doing anything that you want to do. Um, so yeah. Cool. Is there a plan to allow event downloading for us? Uh, event downloading is something that we try to stay away from it, you know, it protects your own content. Um, but we do see a couple of use cases where that could be helpful. Um, right now, it's not one that we really uh, are putting at the front of our, um, of our scope of work, but it's something that we do have on the radar. So we did add it to our, our backlog of features. Um, so I don't, I don't know when we will get to that. And 
And we're also going to really try to limit that feature. Um, we just want to make sure that we're protecting our organizers content. Um, but there, there certainly are use cases where people would maybe want to download content. Um, but you know, I, we, we feel there's other platforms better suited for that type of, you know, if you're trying to share, um, videos with people, um, than, than what we're trying to do here. So, uh, we just want to make sure that it fits our, our kind of brand, uh, positioning. Cool. Um, again, just one more question here. If I have, I, and I think there's a word missing, so I'm not hundred percent sure how to read this. If I have on Vimeo, can they be linked directly from there? Um, absolutely. So you can put, you know, really any links into uh, ViewStub. You know, we're not going to limit you there. And so if you wanted to, you know, sell a ticket here and then redirect someone to Vimeo, that's absolutely fine. Um, really what we have is that registration platform, the ability to use our marketing tools, the ability to track all of your um, individual attendees. Uh, we have authors right now selling books uh, here and they're, you know, quoting that they are making more money than they would be on Amazon or with uh with any of the audiobook platforms um, like Audible or the, the Nook or Kindle platforms. So uh, we, we realistically want you to have a commerce um, solution. And what that means is that you can sell merchandise, you know, you can sell videos, you can sell your courses, you can sell um, video content or just in-person event, you know, attendance and, and do all of that very seamlessly with the combination of different ticket types all from either a white label solution or from a single page uh, and, and not have any you know, technical knowledge needed um, or upfront cost really associated. And so we're not doing any third party advertising uh, like you would on like a, a YouTube or a Facebook. And so uh, we want you to keep most of your money and then give us a small percentage if, if we share in that success. And uh, we really wanna be partners in your success. And so that's why we do a lot of you know, account management and helping you know with customer success and so that's really where we want to be that's the brand that we want to be and so i hope that answers your question but you know um, certainly if you want to link to vimeo absolutely can do that uh, you can really link to anywhere including if you want to sell something through amazon or something like that yeah you did get a follow-up question you got excited i got somebody excited how do you sell books please go into detail Awesome. Yeah. So um, we had uh, an individual selling her book and she was doing really well. She, there was a, there was one author actually, I'll tell a quick story and they were selling their book, but they weren't getting much traction on other platforms and it was $10. And so we were talking and then he goes, well, I'm just going to do a video series and I'm going to give the book away for free. Right. So he ended up, you know, selling the book as a video and audio book here. And then uh, you can even do an audio book or a podcast, for instance, and either, you know, put up an image as a video or just keep the screen black, however you want to do it, um, or show the pages. There's all kinds of different ways. Um, and then ended up uh, giving the book away for free, but was making $15 instead of 10. Uh, so it was a unique way to do a marketing strategy around that. Um, and then the other author that I mentioned, she's in the process of still recording her audio video book. And so uh, she's really excited to launch that here uh, as soon as possible to start to get more sales. But she's actually been selling her, um, her physical books uh, by asking a custom question for their address. And then so she sells it as an in-person event ticket. And then in the description, she writes that she'll mail them their, their copy. And so that's how that works. Um, and she, uh, she likes our commission rate a little bit better than, than some of those other platforms. So. Awesome. Awesome. Also using a donation based ticket um, to do that. Awesome. Um, this all sounds great. Um, oh, this question, I feel like we've answered it. Does the attendee have to create an account with ViewStub if they are purchasing a ticket from the embedded page? Uh, so, so do they have to create an account with ViewStub? No, they would not. All right. Um, and those are, that's the time that we've got for today, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and jump back on screen and wrap this up. Uh, thank you all so much for all of your questions. And thank you, Spencer, for taking the time to answer them. Thank you, Mitch. Also, I know you're hidden back there, but uh, you did great work. Um, Sumo links, if you have not already, you can head to appsumo.com slash viewstub to redeem your code. It is starting at just $99 for a lifetime deal. And of course, we'd love to know how this is working out for you. So uh, leave us some comments on the deal page. 
Uh, we would love, I mean, if you would like to invite us to your event, we would all attend. Um, but uh, yeah, let us know how this is working out for you. Let us know what kind of events you are hosting. And of course, if you have any more questions, you can go ahead and leave those on the deal page. We do love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, the deal is backed by AppSumo's 60 day guarantee. So you can go ahead and get set up, play around with it, host some stuff and see how this works for you. Uh, thank you so much, Spencer. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing everyone on the platform and thank you all for your questions. So we appreciate it. Yeah. All right. You all are awesome. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you.